Cecilia was born in Rome at the close of the second century to wealthy and illustrious parents who were idolaters. I shall name her Cecilia. But honey, doesn't that mean one who cannot see? Yet this shall be her name. Hearing the gospel preach, Cecilia came to believe in Jesus Christ. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy, and according to the multitude of thy compassions, blot out my transgression. She filled her days with fervent prayer and acts of charity to those in need. So great was her devotion to Christ that she resolved to preserve her virginity for him. Cecilia, that Cornelius over there is a beautiful young man. Oh, mother, you know I'm not interested. I've already betrothed myself to Christ. Your father and I have other plans. For many years, Cecilia's mother continued to pressure Cecilia to enter into marriage. And after yet another argument with her mother, we find Cecilia praying in church. To thee alone, O Lord my God, I pledge myself, body, mind, soul, and spirit, that I may live a chaste and sober life to the glory of thy most holy name. Amen. Without her knowledge and against her will, her parents have betrothed her to a highly eligible young man. Daughter, you will be pleased to learn we have arranged a marriage for you, a bridegroom of noble birth named Valerian. But father, I have pledged to live a life of virginity, dedicated to Christ alone. Cecilia, enough of this Christian God of yours. Go at once to array yourself in this fine raiment and jewelry to meet your future husband now. As the providence of God would have it, Cecilia was married. That night, as the newly wed couple approached the bridal chamber, Cecilia's new husband drew near to her and said, Cecilia, I've heard rumors that it was not your will to enter into marriage with me. Valerian, you are a very nice man, but the rumors are true. I have devoted myself to Christ God. But Cecilia, we're married. We can't undo this now. Valerian, an angel has been sent to defend my virginity. If you touch me, he will slay you at once. I say this to protect you. I've heard that your Christian God works many wonders. Grand that I may see this angel. You cannot see the angel because you do not know the true God. You will not be able to see the angel until you are cleansed from the impurity of unbelief. Cleansed? But how may I be cleansed? Bishop Urban is able to cleanse the impious by holy baptism. Take the Appian Way, and when you come upon paupers, say to them, Cecilia asks that you take me to the elder Urban, who is hiding from the persecution in a cave. He will instruct you in the Christian faith, and when he has baptized you, return to me. Then you shall see the angel and receive whatever you desire of him. Cecilia, this is very hard for me to believe, but your devotion has inspired me. I will go see this Bishop Urban to see how I may be cleansed. Valerian set out in search of Bishop Urban along the Appian Way, as his bride had instructed him, and found the paupers who knew Cecilia well, for she often gave them alms. Ah, <coughs> uh, yes, the great Bishop Urban. <coughs> we, we can take you to him. <coughs> he lives in the caves outside of town, away from the authorities. <coughs> come, come, follow me. <coughs> come, 
Bishop Urban, he lives just a little farther around the corner, inside this cave. <laughs> My child, you have come to this place to be purified of the darkness of unbelief. It was divine providence through the handmaiden of God, Cecilia, your wife. Cecilia spoke to me about angels. What is that all about? I find this hard to believe. Before the Lord God Almighty created the stars, he created the first lights, the angelic powers. Speak to me about Christ that Cecilia has told me about. Wasn't he a simple man? This Christ of whom you speak and are very curious about is none other than the God Almighty, the Creator, the Maker of heaven and earth. Do you mean to say, Bishop, that this man Jesus is God? God in the flesh, who was crucified. After Holy Urban prayed and reasoned with Valerian for some time, Valerian's heart began to soften. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, in whom we live and move and have our being. Do you believe, child, that these things are true? Truly, Bishop, there is nothing beneath heaven more certain than this confession. I wish to be baptized. After baptizing him, Bishop Urban sent Valerian back to his holy bride Cecilia, and he found her praying. Seeing an angel of indescribable beauty standing beside her, he exclaimed, Glory to God in the highest! Blessed be his holy name always and forever. Now I know you are truly my brother in Christ, dear Valerian. Let us pray the Lord may grant us wisdom and discernment to know his will and the strength to do it. The angel was holding two crowns of red roses and white lilies. Placing the wreaths on their heads, he said, Guard these wreaths by keeping your hearts pure and your bodies undefiled. I have brought them from paradise, and no one can see them unless they, like you, are lovers of chastity. God revealed me to you, Valerian, because you have agreed to preserve your purity. He wants you to have what you desire. No one is dearer to me. Then my brother Tibertius, I asked the Lord to deliver him from the worship of idols and convert him as he converted me. Your request is pleasing to God and shall be granted. Soon after this, Tibertius providentially came to visit his brother. When he entered the house, he noticed the intense fragrance of roses and lilies. Such a heavenly smell. From where does it come? You can perceive this sweet fragrance, my beloved brother, because I've prayed to God for you, asking you be deemed worthy to receive an unfading crown and come to love him whose blood is red like a rose and whose flesh like a white lily. Am I dreaming? Or are you really telling me this? Until now, we've been living as if in a dream, worshiping false gods and unclean demons. But now, now we can walk in God's truth and grace. Come, brother, so that Cecilia and I may teach you the divine doctrines of the Christian faith. The wise elder further expounded on the mysteries of the Christian faith, and his teachings also permeated the soul of Tiberius. After his baptism, Tiberius was deemed worthy of such grace that he saw holy angels and conversed with them. 
dear Tiburtius, all the celestial hosts celebrate to see another sinner repent and come to the true faith. Father Urban, what is this I see? I see young men clad in brilliant garments all around us. Yes, dear child, you have been cleansed from the impurity of unbelief and your spiritual eyes have been opened. You see the cloud of witnesses which surrounds us. Then the brothers distributed their inheritance to the poor and took care of the sick, widows, and orphans. In addition to these God-pleasing works, Valerian and Tibertius reverently buried the holy martyrs who had been tortured during the terrible persecution of Christians. This was reported to Almachius, the prefect of the city, who hated and persecuted Christians, who ordered that the brothers be arrested and brought to trial. Why do you dishonor your noble estate and give burial to those outcasts who have been put to death for transgressing against the emperor? Have you fallen into the same error as they have? Renounce Christ and offer sacrifice to the gods. But the brothers refuse. Then Almachius ordered the brothers to be scourged without mercy. Valerian urged the Christians not to fear torments, but to stand firm for Christ. In order to prevent the brothers from influencing the people, Almachius ordered that the martyrs be taken outside the city and executed there. The soldiers accompanying the martyrs to execution were commanded by Maximus. He was amazed at the courage of the saints and asked them, Do you not fear death? We are exchanging this temporal life for everlasting life. Yes, if it were not so, we would not rejoice at the thought of losing our lives in this fleeting world. Maximus wanted to learn the Christian teaching in detail. He took Valerian and Tibertius to his own house and conversed with them all night. When she heard of this, Cecilia went with the priest to Maximus. Then he and his entire family were baptized. The next day, on their way to execution, Cecilia exhorted the brothers, Be brave, soldiers of the Lord. Put on the garment of light and complete your contest. You have fought the good fight. Depart now to receive the crown of righteousness, which our Lord shall bestow upon you. The brothers hastened to the place of execution. When Valerian and Tiberius were beheaded, Maximus confessed, I behold God's angels shining like the sun. They have taken the souls of the brother martyrs to heaven in great honor. At this, many heathens believed in Jesus Christ. Learning of what transpired, Amalchius, enraged, commanded that Maximus be beaten mercilessly with rods. The Roman commander turned martyr, then surrendered his soul into the hands of the Lord. Cecilia gathered the remains of Valerian, Tiberius, and Maximus and gave them an honorable burial. Now that these wretched Christians are done with, we shall confiscate their property. We shall pluck every valuable, every trinket from their carcasses. Almachius, I'm sorry to tell you, but we've recently received news that Cecilia, Valerian's wife, has given all their property to the poor. What? Portions of their land were to be mine! 
I wish it wasn't true, but not only this, but through their martyrdom and Cecilia's teaching, around 400 people have been converted to the Christian faith. This is an outrage. Bring this woman, Cecilia, to court at once. And so, the interrogation of Cecilia soon began. Do you not know, wretch, that the Emperor has given me power to destroy you, or to grant you life? You lie, Almachius, when you say that you have power to grant life. You ought to have said you only have power to put to death. While you can slay, you can give life to no one. Sacrifice to the gods and renounce Christ. Then... You will be set free. By God's grace, I am prepared to die for Christ. Then you shall die. Guards, send the Cecilia to the steam chamber. Prefect Amalchius, it's been three days of torture. And even with all the smoke, steam, and boiling water, she's still alive? I've had enough of this nonsense. Send her to the executioner to be beheaded. And so, later that day, the executioner struck her neck three times with a sword, but failing to sever her head from her body only managed to wound the maiden. Prefect, by some strange magic, the beheading failed, and now she lays in bed, bleeding, and she sings. Then just leave her to die, so that she may go to her god. The holy martyr lived three more days in full consciousness while encouraging those around her. She endured her suffering with hymns of praise on her lips and thanksgiving in her heart. Cecilia was buried with reverence and lauded for her life of devotion and holy virtue. Because of her hymnody and singing in the midst of such suffering, Saint Cecilia is regarded as the patron saint of church music. Saint John Chrysostom extols the benefits of sacred music and shows how strongly the fire of divine love is kindled in the soul by devout psalmody. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Alleluia. An amazing, amazing, amazing story yet again. Yet another inspiring, true story from the history of the church. You know, it makes me think, I don't remember where I've heard this. Probably another saint said this, but that the lives of the saints are a continuation or the gospel lived out, right? And it's just, these are real people. These are their lives and it is like reading the pages of the gospel put into action for us to see they're trailblazing. I love that, Nick, and I need to say it. We were just talking about this off air. Father Peter Hears recently was talking about how if you're struggling in your faith, as so many people do, because faith is hard, look to the lives of the saints. Find inspiration in the saints. There's nothing mundane in any of these things. These people are radical. And I'm talking real radical. I'm not talking surfing. I'm not talking skateboarding. I'm not talking cliff jumping. I'm talking about the the one thing needful, the most the most needful thing, the one thing needful, the pearl of precious yes. price, yes. of great price. They left everything to pursue that. And hopefully we can be inspired to follow them yes. in in our own unique circumstance. Yes. And and Nick, like our episode that you maybe have heard already, Saint Fabronia 
St. Cecilia's faith brings Valerian to the faith. This is a man who was a pagan. He wanted to marry her. You know, he liked her. He was in love with her. Who knows? But through her faith and her devotion to God, he comes to faith. These two women, St. Fabronia and St. Cecilia, through their martyrdom and through the witness of their entire life, it's amazing that they both brought the two men, in one sense, closest to them. They didn't want to marry them. These men that were interested in them, they were converted Mm -hmm. through their sufferings, through their witness. It, 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 it touched their hearts. Yes. You know, Nick, a really powerful element, and it's okay. We're talking about St. Cecilia right now. But for those of you who are listening to our podcast regularly, St. Fabronia may, may be on your mind as well. There were not only the suitor that was converted through St. Fabronia's martyrdom, but 400 people were baptized through her faith. Absolutely amazing. If If we would be granted the grace to be responsible in partaking for the conversion of one soul. Imagine the strength of St. Cecilia and her faith and her brilliance, the brilliance of her soul and the brilliance of her faith to convert people like that. Amen. Hundreds, literally yeah. hundreds. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And, it, and, and Nick, I'll touch on, I think it's so interesting based on what you just said. I love that word you used, brilliance, which comes from like brightness, right? Mm-hmm. Well, interestingly, St. Cecilia, the name Cecilia um, in its in its Latin or Greek roots, don't hold me to that. Uh, but it has something to do with one who is unable to see, mm. one who can't see, maybe has some sort of blindness, and yet she is the one through her faith that sees the angel and the angels before her, whereas the others who who couldn't. And what's amazing too is that through the providential naming of her name, right, that God inspired her mother to name her is that through her faith, she brings others to light, right? And I love how the script says that they were cleansed from the impurity of unbelief. That unbelief is actually a sickness of the soul to not be able to recognize or feel the creator who is everywhere present and filling all things. Absolutely. Nick, you were going to talk about St. Cecilia and how she becomes the, the patron saint of church music. Tell us about that. Yes, so actually my mother wrote the script and was in fact St. Cecilia. She was the older St. Cecilia. Um, Thank you, Lorenda. Yes, a a really amazing script. Thank you so much. We hope that you can write some more for us in the future. (laughs) So Nick, one of the beautiful points that that your mom brought out, um, one reason she was so inspired by St. Cecilia and and this uh, story is that St. Cecilia is known as the patron saint of church music. And how that comes about is, as we discussed with her vision, her being able to see the angels, the angelic hosts, she heard the beautiful singing as from heaven. And that is later reflected when she's uh, survived execution. What an amazing part of that story, right? That sword three times was trying to behead her and it was unsuccessful and she's there singing this beautiful hymn and prayers and and the idea is is that she was inspired by the visions of the heavenly hosts she became a prophetess right bringing those literally heavenly and angelic melodies through her own person to those listening and who knows? Who knows what that inspired, right? Amazing. Absolutely. And again, this is a second century saint. We're talking just maybe a generation or two after the apostles themselves. Nick, it, we, it would uh, behoove us to also mention a really cool fact that your father, uh, Professor Fortine, actually also uh, partook in our cast this episode, and he played Valerian. Yeah, if, if Valerian's voice sounded familiar to any of our listeners, it was in fact the same person, my father, who we invited to be interviewed for the two-part series, the exciting series on the First Ecumenical Council. And if you haven't heard that, please listen to those two, the two-part series. It's great. We have a great discussion. My dad is a professor of theology, and he knows a lot, and we got into some of it you know, about the councils and uh, the history and the theology that took place. Absolutely. And and some of the singing that you're going to hear, uh, it's really kind of, this is like a family special in some ways, Nick, For I think for you. It's um, your sister Camille, 
uh, played the angel and played the young uh, Saint Cecilia. Not just my family, it's the family and body of Christ. You know, this is a labor of love from all of us to our listeners. We hope that our labor to bring the story of the saints can reach all of our listeners and inspire and edify you all. Thank you. Such a great episode. We hope you enjoyed listening. Before we go, Nick, we both, and actually I think everyone in the room was so moved at a certain moment of this episode that we really wanted to talk about it here. If you recall when St. Cecilia was, I'm going to say on her deathbed, uh, she had already been, they attempted to behead her and you hear St. Cecilia singing and praying as she's dying, in essence. It was such a powerful moment. Tell us about that, Nick. Yeah, so amazing. You know, we, we had my mother, who played St. Cecilia, sing um, and try to betray St. Cecilia as she was dying um, from those three nearly fatal blows from the sword. Um, and it just felt like we were transported in time and we almost met St. Cecilia and, and we felt the power of her singing, which is amazing because we, you know, the inspiration and vision of this podcast is to bring the lives of the saints in an engaging format. Uh, and I always like to use the image of like a pop-up storybook, right? It's not just, of course, we need just words on a page. And that's what we're pulling these stories from. But our hope is to have the words lift off the page, right? And become us come to life. And really at this point, and in certain points in all of our other episodes, but this one really strongly, it really felt like we just became engulfed in the story. In it felt like we were in that moment. And Nick, how fitting, this just dawned on me as you were saying this, how fitting that the singing of your mother portraying St. Cecilia, who's known and remembered as the patron saint of church music and singing in him, that that is what was so powerful for us in that moment. I think it was her blessing. Amen. You know, St. Cecilia is my mother's patron saint. So I think that was her small or maybe not so small blessing upon this episode. Amen. We hope that you enjoyed uh, the listening of this. If you find sometimes that... It, during our discussions that you maybe had missed something, please go back and listen again. Uh, share with us your thoughts on these episodes. We love hearing from our listeners. You can email us directly at cloud of witnesses, radio at gmail.com. Or please, if you're listening on YouTube, please just leave a comment, like subscribe, and please share on Facebook. We're on Facebook and share on Instagram. Our hope and prayer is that these stories and the work that we do, God willing can reach people and can reach and inspire more and more people around us in a world that desperately needs true guides and true lights, true luminaries of the Orthodox faith. Amen. And may they help you stay true to your faith and endure until the end. Amen. Thank you for listening. By the radiance of thy holy life, Thou didst draw the two brothers united in spirit to the eternal light. O Cecilia's fellow contestants, you were counted worthy of divine glory. Ask that we who praise you may receive the forgiveness of our sins. My name is Robert, and I played Valerian. I'm Camille, and I played young Cecilia and the angel. I'm Dominic, and I was one of the narrators. Hi, this is Hannah, and I played the role of Cecilia's mother. I'm John, and I played Bishop Urban and Amakius. Hi, this is Alexander, and I played Cecilia's father. I'm Holly, and I was one of the narrators. I'm Nick, and I'm the sound guy. I'm Joshua, and I played Tiberius and a reporter. I'm Oksana, and I played Almachius' wife. I'm Lorinda, and I played Cecilia. My name is Jeremy, and I played Maximus, and that's a wrap! <laughs> Glory be to God. Lorinda, you wrote a great script. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Cloud of Witnesses, Journey with the Saints. We hope it proved to be exciting and inspiring for all of our listeners. 
May God, through the prayers of his most pure mother and all the saints, guide us all to the heavenly homeland. We hope to see you next time here on Cloud of Witnesses, Journey with the Saints.